Welcome to this video. The objective of this video is to show you how you can create a Turtle Python uh, application that listen to keyboard input. So if the user press S, it draws a square, R, a rectangle, uh, one, change color to red, things like that. Or maybe press arrow up, down, escape, all those different keys on your keyboard. So how you can make your application to listen to the keys and do some, some process. That's the main uh, idea. You can use this to create games and other applications as you like. I'll show you the application that we will create. Then we will go through the steps of how we can create the application. So if I run this application here and I press on S on my keyboard, so it draws a square. If I press R, it do a rectangle. If I keep pressing, it will change directions why it's doing that. So it bring some different shapes. I can press one to change color to red. And now it's drawing in red, as you can see. It does things all uh, in red color. If I change two, it will be blue color. Okay. And it will start doing that. And three is yellow color, I think, yeah. So how we can create an application similar to this. And it's a very basic application, but you can use the idea to do more uh, in your uh, uh, application. So how we do that? Let's start uh, a new one. We have the code here. Uh, let's just start a new one, and then we will see how we can create it. So I'm using rebel.it, which is an amazing tool. Uh, I think if you watch my previous videos, you will notice that uh, I use it for Python programming, but it can be used for 30 different languages. And you don't need to install anything. You run everything on the, on the cloud. So I'm going to create a new uh, Ripple. I'll call it my Ripple. I come to a screen where I can click here plus now. We made some improvement on the application. Um, if I write here turtle, Python turtle, that's the language or the package we will use to create application. The language is Python and the package called turtle. So you start in turtle by importing turtle and we will import it as T. It means from now on, on when we refer to T, we refer to turtle. And Turtle can do so many things for us. You've seen it before. You can uh, draw a line, draw a square, move left, right, all those different directions. Okay? That's one thing. The other thing, I need to create a window. So a window is where my application will, will, will appear. So I need a window uh, that will will be using to draw. So I window, I'm using T, which is my turtle, screen. This is how you create a window and enter them. Now this window, it will be where the drawing will come on the screen. To make sure the drawing always coming in the center, so I'll add T go to zero, zero. So always it will be in the center. If you don't do that, when you start, your drawing will be somewhere on the screen. Maybe you do not see it, and that will cause you some, some problem. So these are the first three lines. You need to import turtle. We need to create a screen. Uh, use a variable wn, but you can use any variable you like. Uh, I use wn to refer to window. And then we centered our turtle in the middle of our screen. Now, at the end, somewhere here, the last line of your code should be wn.listen. This must be the last line. Why? Because anything after that line will be ignored by, by Turtle. And this line, what it does, it listens to the user actions. So if the user press anything on the keyboard, it li keep listening to that. Now, if you press S, it will understand that you pressed S. And then what it will do for that, that's what we need uh, to do. Now, if you want it, when we press S, it call a function called square, for example. Okay, so that's what we decided. So we can say WN on key. 
on on key when the key is pressed call the function square okay sorry square comma which key will be pressed we want s so now when s is pressed on the keyboard the function square will be called now notice i don't have open close bracket here you don't need it doesn't work this way it's just like that now that's one thing now if the user let's copy this line and add another function here we will call it uh, rectangular like rectangular as r and we press r so the user press r it does that now let's come here and do our function our function should be in the middle so now to understand the structure again you will have your import on the top you will create the screen you will go to zero and at the end of your line you should have the last one is listen w and listen and then you have to decide which key you the user will press and when that key which function will be called okay now these two function do not exist we need to write them so let's write them let's do the square first so in, in python this is the way you declare a function use def means define a function and we're calling this function square and it's receiving no parameters so that it is and colon at the end this is the structure of a function in uh, in, in python <coughs> How you do that, usually you say t square, we need yeah, forward say 20, means go forward 20, then turn to the left by 90, and then you repeat those two lines uh, four times, they have to be, yeah, see, okay, so you go forward 90, go forward 90, go forward the last one you didn't need so that basically drawing a square for you yeah this way it draws a square now if i want a rectangular rectangular is similar to square so i can just copy this and put it here and i call it let's just remove those spaces call it rect as we did call it the same name we used here must be here now the difference between square and rectangle, I think you know that. So we'll make these two are 40. Now we are ready to test our application. So what we have, we have the two functions. We are saying when the user click S, call this function. When the user click R, call this function. And let's see now if we run this and I press S. Very good, press R. Very good. Keep pressing R and it will start drawing different shapes. Press S and keep pressing S, it will do something else. Now basically it's listening to us. So whatever we press, it will listen to it, but it will action only S and R because we have functions written for S, which is square, and function written for R. The rest we don't have. Yeah? This is good. Now, what if we want to change the color? So, we need to make it when the user press 1, it becomes red. Same thing. This line needs to be repeated. WN dot on key. Okay. Now, we need to decide what function we will call. We'll call it color R. Okay. Red. When the user press one okay notice the the key always should be between quotation yeah because we're using uh, the ASCII key or okay anyway let's go this is B and this one yellow and this one two and this one three now, if we run it like that, we'll get an error because those functions are not declared yet. So we need to come here and create this function. Def color r and we're passing no parameters. And basically we'll say t color 
red. That's how you change color in turtle. And if you following our previous examples, you could have, you will find it uh, easy uh, to understand. So basically, I'm changing this one to blue and say blue color. This one to white and we call it yellow. Good. Our application is ready. But if we just go here and press S or R, it's still running the old application. It is not listening to our colors. We need to run it again. Say run. And now we do R. It's doing R. Do S. Now let's press 1. It's became red. Press 2. Became yellow. Press 3. Became, became 3. Became yellow. 2. Became blue. And, and it's now ready to start drawing different shapes based on the color that we select and so on. Now, you can improve this application yourself by adding other things. You can add a function for a row up. When the user press a row up, it goes forward by some certain. Or, or pressing left, turning the the angle uh, left by say five degrees or whatever you want to do and the same to right the same to to down so you can make this application behave in the way you want it maybe you want the key to be up so uh, the the cursor to be up you don't want to draw you want to move your mouse from one place to other place or cursor from one place to other but you don't want the drawing to be happening so you can use for example you to, to take the pin up and D to put it down. The many things you can do with this. You can now advance it and maybe you create a snake game or something more advanced than this application. The idea is now you understand how you make your application listen to you by creating a screen, having the last line called listen, and using on key to decide which function will be called when which key on the keyboard is, is pressed and then you will function you do it in the middle as as you know so this is the whole idea behind it i hope you find find it useful and you will advance it and do something uh, more uh, meaningful to you thank you for listening